back to this video where we'll discuss Wimbook features and setting up Recruitec without Quickset. Let's begin. Let's launch the Wimbox application on your computer. You can use Neighbor Discovery to list all available routers. From the list of discovered routers, you can click on the IP or MAC address column to connect to that router. If you click on the IP address, then IP will be used to connect. But if you click on the MAC address, then the MAC address will be used to connect to the router. Now that the router indicates it has the default configuration set up on a Mikrotech router, we want to set it up ourselves. So we'll choose to remove the current configuration. After this action, the router will delete the default configuration and will need to log back in using the MAC address since the IP address won't be available anymore due to removal of the default config. Winbox has three main parts. Top toolbar, add info fields like CPU, date and time, memory usage, and uptime. The title bar displays information that helps identify which router's Winbox session is currently open. This information is presented in the following format. Undo and redo. Undo reverse the last action. Redo reapply the last undone action. Left menu bar lists all available menus and submenus which change based on installed packages. For example, if IPv6 is disabled, its menu won't show yet. Work area where menu windows open up for your task. Zoom in and zoom out refers to adjusting the size of the various windows and panels within the Winbox interface. Safe mode. This mode is useful when you need to troubleshoot or fix issues with the device without the risk of accidentally changing critical settings. Let's set up our internet connection. Configure triple PoE client on Ether1. Go to interfaces from the left side menu. Click on the plus button to add a new interface. Choose triple PoE client from the list. Enter the required information provided by your ISP. Interface name, give it the name, triple PoE out, we're going to leave it like that. Username, your ISP provided username. Password, your ISP provided password. By enabling the add default root option, we are instructing the Mikrotech router to recognize that our triple PoE connection is our internet gateway. This means that any outgoing internet traffic should use the triple PoE client to reach the internet. Click apply and then OK. We observe that a triple PoE client is active. Status. This information helps you monitor the health and activity of your triple PoE connection. When a status is running, it means a triple PoE connection is active and operational. Monitoring values such as bytes in, out and packets in, out can give you insight into the data transfer while errors drop can alert you to any issues that need attention. Before entering your username and password, you can check by going to the triple PoE scan to see if the triple PoE server or your ISP server name is visible. Let's configure a bridge and specify the ports we want in the bridge. This will allow us to instruct our DHCP server to provide local IP addresses to our local devices such as smartphones and smart TVs and PCs.
Next, we'll set up the gateway IP address for the local devices. This will help the devices know where to go to access the internet. We will now configure a DHCP server to assign dynamic IP addresses to local devices connecting to ports 2 to 5, which are part of a bridge interface. The DHCP server is asking if the router must use 192.168.0.1 as its address. As our gateway is set to 192.168.0.2, I'm using 192.168.0.2 as the gateway because the default IP for the Wi-Fi router is 192.168.0.1. So please exclude 192.168.0.1 from the DHCP server range. We can improve internet browsing by adding Google DNS service to our settings for DNS. We are now going to configure a firewall for NAT mask rating. This means we are going to set up a firewall to act as a NAT network address translation gateway, which will hide the internal network IP address and present only the firewall IP address to the external network. It allows devices on an internal network to access the internet using a single public IP address. Let's disconnect the network cable from our laptop and then reconnect it so that the laptop can obtain a dynamic IP address from the DHCP server. The laptop has received an IP address. Let's check in a command prompt to see if we can now access the internet. We are able to successfully ping Google's IP address. Now let's open our internet browser and visit the website. We are now moving on to configuring the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. If you watch part 1, 2 and 3, you should be familiar with the process. Once the Wi-Fi bands are set up, we'll proceed to the security profiles where we can establish security settings for both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network. We are going to choose simple mode to make setting up easier for you. I'm disabling WPS because Mikutuk routers have a combined WPS and reset button. This means clients can reset the router if they want to use WPS for easier printer connection to, to their Wi-Fi network. We can utilize this default profile to establish encryption for our Wi-Fi SSID network on both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. On the toolbar, we have the option to reveal or hide a password using the hide password feature. Next, we'll add the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi interfaces to the bridge ports. This way, when local devices connect to the Wi-Fi interface, they will receive a dynamic IP from the DHCP server.
Let's test if my phone can receive a dynamic IP from the Wi-Fi interface. Here in the DHCP server leases, we can see the IP addresses of both my laptop and my phone now. We've noticed that the NTP network time protocol setting on my Mikrotek router is incorrect. We'll search for the NTP server in the South Africa region and add it to the Mikrotek router to ensure it syncs with the correct time and date. NTP network time protocol is a protocol used to synchronize the clocks of the computers and devices over a network. It allows devices to maintain accurate time and coordinate time-based activities ensuring consistency across the a network. I forgot to allow DNS request on a Mikrotek as I'm using DNS for my DHCP DNS. No worries, let's take the server name, ping it to get the IP and then use the IP to sync the NTP. Let's check the Mikrotek logs to observe the time and date change. The time and date have changed, but we need to adjust the clock settings to UTC plus 2 for South Africa. Once we do this, the time should display correctly. Alright, let's head to IP services to block ports against brute force attacks and only permit access for our laptop's IP. Now we'll navigate to Mikrotek Identity to change the name of the Mikrotek router. Let's update the admin username and password so we can log into the router using our own credentials instead of the default ones. Let's log out of the Mikrotek router and log back in using the username and password we created. After that, we can remove the default admin username. Let's discuss the child menu bar in Mikrotek. Each child window has its own toolbar. Most of the windows have the same set of toolbar buttons. The Mikrotek child menu bar refers to the secondary menu options that appear when you select the primary menu item. These child menus provide more specific configuration options related to the main menu items. For example, add new item to the list, remove, remove selected item from the list, enable selected item the same as enable command for console, disable select item the same as disable command from console, comment add or edit comment commenting is very important for easier troubleshooting
Thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll cover static routing. Goodbye.